guys welcome back uh, I got a lot of inquiries about the suspension um, so I figured I'd make a video show you guys how it works what's up with it how I did it this and that rundown it's very interesting for people who like to build stuff like I did it is 100% custom it's not a kit uh, I did make a set of these for another guy that he could make his own so there's two of these running around that looks very similar I believe his are gold it's red box body um, so anyway let's get to it uh, so it really doesn't do much more except for moving the springs up into the top rather than down below. Uh, a lot of times race cars will use this because they don't have room for the coil levers down below for tire space or suspension movement or whatever the deal is. Um, that is not why I did it. I did it because it fucking looks awesome. Uh, they can also do it because it's less weight on the, on the uh, suspension. So rather than moving the whole coil over, you're only moving this little rod right here that goes down to the lower control arm and that'll make your suspension react faster uh, what do they call that um, unsprung weight because it's not actually sprung um, so anyway this goes down a little control arm as that comes up this pushes on the pivot here so the pivot uh, pivots on this guy it just transfers the movement from up to over and then compresses the coil over and I built a bar here welded in between the K's the K's is all welded into the chassis so it's all pretty stiff I've also welded the uh, the body to the subframe underneath you know this was a test deal anyway you know, trial and error as it goes because um, the original spot wells up over time started kind of pulling up popping you can get a little pop at, uh, hitting some bumps uh, they were basically trying to separate so ended up pulling a in an IRS swap and pulling the IRS back out welding all that solid so the subframe is part of the, the body now um, so anybody looking to do that, that's that's a major thing to do. To race your car anyway, or if you beat beat on your car as it is, that's probably not a bad idea. Uh, anyway, I put this bar in here in between that everything basically mounts to. I got the mounts for the pivots. I got the mounts for the coilovers. Uh, and these bad boys, these are stainless that I had powder coated. Uh, I want to say they're about quarter thick, maybe three sixteenths. Um, so far, these been on there for quite a while. This is probably the second or third set of different ones that I had. I got these. I made these because they kind of match the wheels with the double spoke, uh, kind of give you a little uh, in and out deal here, um, some matching. Uh, all the accents used to be orange, is why they're orange right now. Uh, later on I will pull these back out and get them powder coated, that blue that I have on the calipers and the blower. Uh, the Viking coilovers, I cannot complain about these, I've been running these for quite a while, I like them. Uh, as far as, I'm not a race car driver so I can't tell you this and that and the specifics of it but uh i like them overall um very interesting if you want to hear about that company read, read uh, look that up uh, it does come from uh, uh they do a, come from qa1 type of deal uh one of, i believe it was one of the children of the qa1 owner um anyway i had a uh, custom delrin bushings put in these i was going to use bearings but trying to find a bearing that matches the exact size this and that uh, just be too much pain in the ass so I had some custom Delrin bushings made. Uh, Delrin is a harder plastic rubber uh, basically um, that's also very slick so uh, it's solidly it mounts pretty solid like a hard bushing or, or a hard yeah, it'd be like a hard bushing like a brass one sort of but it's very slick and uh, not abrasive so yeah, everything in there can move around pretty good even though there's a sleeve in it that goes to the bolts so there's basically if something wears out, that's going to be it. Um, all the bolts I um, got in there. Uh, I got you know, custom space to try to keep everything sort of aligned, this and that. Uh, spaces to keep everything from touching. Uh, it's very convenient. I can adjust it from up here. You know, all I have to do, I don't have to get under the car to change the coilovers or adjust anything. I got double adjustable right here, right in the hatch. I mean, I could probably reach back from the driver's seat and get to them. Uh, if I want to change the springs, just jack it up a little bit. They'll release the tension. Can unbolt it right there pull the spring off change the spring i mean that'd probably be a you know five to ten minute job at most and you know i wouldn't have to get on the ground this and that crap uh, it's very very neat and interesting um uh, overall i can't say i hate it um, a lot of people think there's a ton of interior noise uh, i've got a 600 horsepower supercharged ls you don't think there's a lot of interior noise already uh, so this really isn't that bad as i mean as far as the screen, i don't even notice notice if it does make noise it probably does but the end of the day look at the rest of the car uh, a full stereo in it too a 10 inch sub uh, uh, 
I need some highs. Got amps under the, where the back seats used to be anyway. So noise is noise. Who cares? Not a Cadillac. It is what it is. Um, what else here? Also, so I to get these up, I drilled out where the top of the shock mount was. And a lot of times, coil levers mount to that, and uh, you have to really stiffen that. Is what you're supposed to do because that can rip out from the body as well. They're not really meant to hold the weight of the vehicle. So I originally had coils in there for probably a year or less. Uh, I never had that issue, um, but I just thought have an IRS. This would be cool after seeing, um, <clears throat> you know, I didn't invent it, neither did Von Gittin Jr. But his '69 Mustang had it, and that's what inspired me to do this. Uh, I have seen it before, and, and I said he was not the originator of it. This goes back a long, long time ago. A lot of off-road racers use this style too. <clears throat> Just where you put it, which is kind of interesting. I thought of all kinds of ideas. Thought about going up the cage with it, because really you're just transferring the movement. Um, and if I did it later on, maybe I'd do something wild like that, put it up there where you can actually really see it through the window and stuff too, which you can. You just have to be over top to be able to see down. Uh, anyway, uh, I do have grease fittings in there. It's probably hard to see in the camera where I could grease that because there is a little gap between the bushing that would get grease down in there for the bolt and everything. Um, other than that, yeah, that's pretty much how that setup works. You know, it's pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, looks cool, it's awesome, gets lots of attention. Uh, you see it through the windshield whenever I go and park somewhere at a car meet or something, people always see it or if I pop the hat, you know, it definitely pops and stands out. That's why I like this orange. This orange is really nice, kind of translucent. Gives it that burnt orange, but also gives you the brushness and the stainless behind it uh, pretty soon that'll be that blue anyway um, overall yeah if you have talent some skill and the right tools you can do this too like I said my buddy did it uh, up in I want to say like from Virginia so he has the same exact triangles what do you want to call them uh, so, uh, and by the way the name of this is cantilever or push rod suspension whichever you prefer to call push rod for push rod or cantilever because of cantilevers other than that that's pretty much it